I've been following your journey from the Google acquisition days all those years ago, and uh, they certainly have come far. Besides doing a good dancing twist, what are some of the coolest things your robots can do today? Well, the reason we chose dancing was because it forces us to build technology to really coordinate all those limbs on a robot in uh, ways that turn out to be important if you're going to do useful work. So I think you had the, the point exactly right. It's about those capabilities, especially with a, a new arm. So we just launched an arm for Spot. And for it to be able to open a door out in the world, you have to coordinate the arm, the body, the legs, everything at once together. And um, you know that dance kind of pushed our technology to the point that opening the door now becomes kind of matter of fact. You're expanding your Spot robot line uh, with Spot Enterprise. Uh, Spot can monitor sites remotely, as I understand it, which means anything from power grids to construction sites. And you know what else could that involve? Airports, railroads, farms, space. Space would be interesting. It's a long ways away. We're starting, we're starting nearer to earth with things, as you mentioned, like uh, construction sites, uh, nuclear power plants, uh, utilities, things where there's a site, maybe it's located remotely and you want a robot uh, to be there when you can't be, or maybe it's dangerous, like a nuclear power plant. And the robot can be inside doing an inspection, keeping people away from radiation. So those are the kinds of applications, mostly industrial asset management. Now, there have been some delays there. I mean, talk to us about just the difficulty of getting something this dynamic to market. It's taken decades of work. You know, we had to solve some very fundamental problems in robotics, balance and locomotion, and then building all of that into a reliable platform that is affordable. And honestly, it took, uh, you know, decades of research and then another decade of further development uh, you know in companies like Google and SoftBank uh, and next Hyundai uh, to get this to a commercial market. It, so there were some big technical barriers but that also now benefits us because I think we've crossed those barriers and it'll be uh, harder for others to follow. Now Aaron Levy was joking there, but there has always been this fear of robots taking over the world, um, that humans will be replaced, this apocalyptic future. How do you believe in reality that decades from now, robots will be part of our lives? So, you know, that story, that fear has more to do with a resilient fictional narrative that's been told for the last hundred years than with reality. The reality is, is robots are tools and they're going to be our trusted coworkers taking off, taking parts of the jobs that, that we don't want to be doing. So I think the fictional narrative is just very different and it's been told so many times that it comes to mind first. But I think now we're finally getting to robots that can really be out in the world. This next generation of robots will be, they look different, They'll be out amongst us and they'll have a much diverse set of more diverse set of skills. And they're ultimately going to be our tools for improving productivity and, and safety. So you sold from Google, then there was SoftBank, now SoftBank selling to Hyundai. Talk to us about the CFIUS review, how that's going. Uh, is it holding things up? It seems to be moving a little more slowly than the last time you went through this. No, it's not going more slowly, and it's just a part of the standard process. Uh, so CFIUS does need to review our sale to Hyundai, um, but it's proceeding normally at this point. We expect um, shooting for you know um, end of March, uh, end of May, uh, as a time frame we'll be able to consummate this deal. You know, our our life within uh, Google and uh, SoftBank and Hyundai, they've all had their benefits. They were important steps along the path. And I think Hyundai is going to be a great home for us. Now, Bloomberg has reported that the company, though, is still losing potentially billions of dollars. And I'm curious, why has it been so hard to make this a financially sustainable endeavor? Well, we only launched our first product last year. Uh, we launched Spot in September. Uh, we've sold over 400, I think we're at 425 robots so far. So it's a pretty good start. And we've got a ways to go. Um, 
you know, we made money, we made money most of our life. Um, it's really only when we uh, were acquired by Google and then SoftBank that we quit trying to live off of our own uh, income. And that's because we focused on research and we needed to do this development to solve these hard technical problems. And that took significant investment uh, and time to do so. But I think we have solved those problems and I think now we can reap the rewards, but it'll take time. We've got to build, we're building a brand new market here. No legged robot like Spot has existed before. And uh, it's gonna take time to build that market and, and get customers uh, accustomed to and thinking about what Spot can do for them. So if indeed Hyundai becomes your new parent, talk to us about the, your vision for your technology and robotics in self-driving cars. Well, Hyundai a, has a, um, a broad portfolio and indeed self-driving cars are part of that and they, they share a lot of technology uh, with our robots. You know, our vision is to continue to push our mission and our mission right now is launching and making Spot successful. You know, we've just added, um, you know, the enterprise version, as you noted, that lets Spot work remotely, software that lets you connect to it, a new arm. And we're about to launch a new uh, set of products uh, in the logistics space in the next few months. So we want to launch a series of mobile manipulation robots that uh, transform industry.